What is up my ninjas? I'm Strident and today we are taking a look at the Transformers Collectors Club, Marissa Fairborn and Afterbreaker. I have so much to say about this, but uh, I'm going to start with all the positive stuff. You know me, I'm not big on the Collectors Clubs. Um, this could have been a retail release. The fact that it's reused G.I. Joe parts is pretty awesome. If you don't know who the character is, Marissa Fairborn is a character who showed up in a five-part miniseries called uh, Five Faces of Darkness. Uh, she may have shown up in other episodes. I really don't remember her. But what's significant about this character is that she is the daughter of, hence the last name, she's the daughter of uh, Flint, Dashiell R. Fairborn, and... Uh, Allison Hart Burnett Fairborn, <laughs> AKA uh, Lady J, two of my favorite Joes. And uh, so I had to, I always was looking at this. You know, I was always looking at this. I was actually thinking of buying the figure separate because I think this two pack is pretty damn stupid. But uh, my homeboy, uh, uh, TJ347, uh, he donated this one. And uh, thank you, homie. And we get to kind of look at the inner workings, if there are really any, for us to kind of, you know, see if this is really worth the money. So I'm gonna go through and give you the lowdown. All right, so her sculpt is pretty cool. It's a combination of a lot of figures. Um, there are parts from the second Baroness figure from Rise of Cobra. There are parts from Agent Courtney Krieger from the figure subscription service from uh, Resolute Scarlet. But overall, the sculpt is pretty nice. The way the usage of the parts works well for the character. Um, and then, you know, she kind of does have a resemblance to her mother and father, strangely enough, even though that wasn't the intent of the, the, the previous usage of that sculpt. Um, I guess the initial, you know, outing for the sculpt. But, uh, you know, her parts look good. The weapons look good. I mean, they all come from different figures. That uh, backpack is the jump backpack. You know, um, the uh, gun, the bigger gun, the heavier gun of the two comes from the... Uh, actually, I'll get into that. It comes from the uh, Hazard Viper. The tiny laser gun comes from, I want to say, the Bat or the uh, Iron Grenadiers, the 25th anniversary Iron Grenadier. But it fits with her because she has that futuristic setting, you know, or she's from a futuristic setting, you know. Um, so overall, she is a passable, you know, figure. She does the, the what, what's needed to get the character across. Now, After Breaker, on the other hand, that's a whole nother story. This right here is some kind of shameless BS, in my opinion. And it's weird how... Uh, uh, accepting the, co the collector community was of this figure. Number one, it's a transformer that doesn't fucking transform. Number two, it's a design that is not a transformer's design. Now, would it have been dope if they took this exact design and figured out a way to transform it? Oh, hell yeah, that'd be awesome. Because then it would fit the aesthetic that we're going for. You just slap an Autobot logo on a, a, a motorcycle. It doesn't even transform. And then on top of it, it's a repaint uh, of one of the retaliation, uh, the retaliation, what they call this, uh, the wheel blaster bike. Um, it went with uh, Firefly. And it's just, in my opinion, it's just lame. It's just really stupid that this is the way they chose to do some things. I mean, obviously, there's little bits and pieces of things they did better. The paint job seems nicer on Afterbreaker than it was necessarily on the, uh, the the original release. But, I mean, it's the exact same thing. Um, it just, it's not enough for the gimmick that they're going for. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be more of a Transformers thing than a G.I. Joe thing. But it's as if they knew that the fans wouldn't complain about just releasing a bike with the Autobot logo on it and that they knew they'd get away with it, so that's exactly what they did. All right, I have some big issues with this set. Number one, this is the robot mode, which obviously is completely absent from this release. And it's not like they've never made Transformers that transform into vehicles that are the right scale for G.I. Joe's. This is what the G1 toy looked like. Color scheme is there. 
obviously the one we got is a different orange, but there's really, there's no way you're gonna convince me that this is even remotely reminiscent of this or the other way around. It just seems really stupid and really negligent. And the fact that the fans have embraced that pisses me off. Now, if you would use this vehicle mode and then repainted it, I think this is Chromia, Generations Chromia. Now, somebody did this. I don't know if it was actually released as a separate, you know, a reissue or something, but this is closer. And then there, these are from the uh, more recent lines that they've done. And there's been some third party ones too. I had trouble finding good enough pictures of the third party ones, so I'm just mention mentioning them. Um, but either way, all these are better than what they gave you, you know what I mean? Even a modified version of this where the actual bot and vehicle mode, like scale it up a little bit so that she could fit underneath that dome, would all work better than what they gave us. Reusing a G.I. Joe vehicle, one of the vehicles that like didn't even sell that well and was peg warming for years, it's like from the marketing side, from the company side, it makes sense. But for the actual fan and the fact that this cost 40 some odd dollars it just doesn't make sense and the fact that you guys just open-heartedly op with open arms you just accepted this no 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 shame just shame it's just not right this shame that's all i can say shame shame <laughs>talk accessories uh miss fairborn comes with only a few accessories if you don't count after breaker even though technically he is a glorified accessory um she has her stand her jet pack a laser pistol and i guess a heavy laser rifle um all these parts obviously are reuse parts which is one of the things that it never makes sense to me when you think about the price for this set. Everything in the set is a reuse. All you did was repaint stuff. You didn't retool shit. So how can it be that expensive? You know what I mean? Um, and I and I know somebody's gonna try to get in the comments and try to school me on all the, the, the politics of how this works. But when you already own the molds for everything and you already own all the parts and you've already used all the parts, for previous releases, this is you kind of just printing money. Now, like I said earlier, the heavy rifle is literally just a, a, a remold of the Hazard Vipers uh, water pistol, chemical pistol, whatever you want to call it. Um, it even hooks up to the jump pack the same way that this pistol hooked up to their uh, uh, tank, you know, with uh, Chemical Z in it. I mean, I guess it's a good reuse because it does have kind of a design that could work as either some kind of hose, some kind of, you know, spraying weapon or a, uh, a laser pistol, you know, it kind of looks like that. The jump pack is self-explanatory and I guess it fits perfectly for the, uh, you know, the, the time period she comes from. And I think she did use a jet pack in one of the episodes. This laser pistol, I know a lot of people have issues with it because it just looks like something out of Flash Gordon. It looks like a ray gun, but it kind of fits. That was the aesthetic of the more spacefaring people and the futuristic details for humans in the G1 cartoon. So I don't really have a problem with this and it, it fits in her hands perfectly. So I don't have a problem with that. Uh, she, she looks good with the weapons in her hands, especially the heavy pistol. I think because it has a thinner wire connected to the backpack that works better you know it doesn't it doesn't resist when you put it in her hand and then you know like i said the smaller pistol it just looks really good and if you push it down a little bit further and get her pointer over the trigger it works well the backpack it sits in nice and and, and snugly i would have added uh shoulder you know harnesses for it a shoulder harness for it just to make it look more of the part but you know it does look like something she would actually use you know so i i dig it and it, it fits now for the comparison this is her standing next to uh resolute scarlet and you can see all the parts that were reused i don't have 
the uh, agent Courtney Krieger figure from the figure subscription service for obvious reasons because I do not support that that uh, service. But they did enough here to make her stand out. She doesn't feel like 100% the same figure. So kudos to them for pulling that off. You know, sometimes they try. Somebody there, you know, uses their brain and you know, tries to be creative with the usage of parts. And I like that. I'll give them their props for that. I, uh, uh, the, 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 the vest, I know that's an important piece and the vest looks good. It looks like, you know, it looks tactical and it looks like she can move. And that's the part that I like the best. You know me, form and function have to go hand in hand. Otherwise your design falls apart. And to me, they pull this off in spades. So I can't really complain about how they did what they did, especially with the figure. She clearly is the highlight of this set. So uh, yeah, props to them for all of that. And now of course we've come to the bottom line. Overall, I think this is one of those sets that's kind of frivolous. It's like you don't need it unless you're a huge fan of the character, if you even remember the character. Um, if you're a fan of, uh, you know, G.I. Joe and you want to have like some of the, the, the descendants or you know the, the sibling i mean not siblings the, the children of the joe team members then this is another one you would get another character you'd look up is checkpoint from cops um it's a pretty cool thing that all throughout these media um they've they've kept the spirit of these characters alive i just don't think packing her with a non-transforming bike and then slapping an Autobot logo on it is a smart move. It's dumb. I mean, in the end, it was smart because they made a shitload of money off of that. But to me, it feels like a cheap tactic. And I, you know, if this wasn't given to me, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have picked it up. I probably would have looked for her by herself. And she goes for some different prices. <laughs> when I say different, I mean like kind of ignorant prices. Because sometimes I've seen her go for more than the set. Because clearly the bike is kind of inconsequential. You know what I mean? But... If you are a fan of that design for the bike and you couldn't find that bike by itself, which it's like a dime a dozen on eBay, then pick it up. You'll love it. You'll, uh, the, the figure fits nicely on the bike. She's well put together and she has the right kind of accessories that give you the feeling that she is some kind of a space aged, uh, I shouldn't even say space aged, some kind of old school futuristic hero, you know? So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Shame on them for the bike buy it for the figure. Um, that's my story as always and I'm sticking to it. I'm Strident and this has been my look at Marissa Fairborn and Afterbreaker from the G uh, Transformers Collectors Club and uh, I don't know she's kind of it's kind of a mixed bag for me but uh, I hope you dug the review and uh, you've been great. Peace outside. Thank you for watching my video. Um, if you enjoyed what you saw, please give it a like, a share, let your friends know. Um, check me out on social media. All the links are in the description. And if you really want to help me out big time, jump on Patreon and support the channel. Every little bit helps, the smallest amount to the largest amount. And last but not least, check out my comic, War of the Gods. Uh, issue 2 is on sale now on uh, Indie Planet. And the links are in the description. It's some superhero fun. And as a smaller independent book, it needs all the views, all the eyes on it as possible. So check it out. Show it to your friends. Every view helps greatly. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks again.